with that being said let's get to the second part of this which is growth hacking organic social for growth hacking is a tremendously valuable way to help your paid media effort now i hear you saying well what does one thing have to do with the other well where do you think that audience is coming from remember facebook even your first ad is a re is a retargeting impression that's not up for debate even if it's the very first thing you've ever done as a brand Facebook's still showing that ad to somebody based on their other behavior. They're retargeting that user for their journey. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean they're retargeting from your brand, but let's be fair, Facebook doesn't really care about your brand. They're trying to care about their customers, their user base, monetizing that attention and keeping that attention, retaining attention for profit is Facebook's business model. And that optimized CPM environment basically completely rewrote what social media was. And the best social media platforms on the planet basically are some version of that. That's what we call optimized CPM. So when you start doing growth hacking efforts, and some of which people are like, oh, that's really shady. I don't like when it happens. Like, okay, well, if it makes money, who cares? Simple things even like, what if you just start to go to your competitors' pages, not their ad library, but their organic social feed, and see what people like? Knowing that most advertisers wildly underutilize the social side, and you're only looking at the ad library, you're only looking at half of how that brand's getting attention. And there are a lot of brands where the organic social could be killing it, even though they're not able to make paid work. There are a lot of brands that, that focus on getting UGC, and we all know what that looks like. You know, I mean, I remember when it was influencer marketing. I remember when it was buying access to celebrity pages back in 2016, 2017. And I had a six-figure monthly budget to do that. And we'd whitelist to it. And we'd get the ads. And we'd make content. We'd run it from their account. I launched the blueprint for that stuff back in 2017, 2018. And it's great to see it really become popular now. But that's old hat. And if people are not even employing that strategy enough, what information do you think you're missing in looking at your competitor's Instagram or their TikTok account? Have you gone to your competitor's pages and seen what content they post that ultimately does really well and doesn't look like yours? What words are they using? What content types are they using? What's the branding, the positioning, the angles? If somebody else is already investing a lot of effort and they're doing a lot better than you, why not steal it from them? Why not make it something that ultimately you are able to leverage for your benefit? The point here is when we do growth hacking on organic social, we can understand what people are doing. Now, I've just talked about the research into what they're doing. Let's get into some of the growth hacking efforts. Who's to say that you don't start going in and just engaging with everybody who's engaged with your competitors? Why not just give them a follow? People really dislike the follow and follow method, but I'll tell you, it works. Following, a, following an account on social media is pretty much less like hanging a flyer on somebody's door. Each one is kind of useless, but when you do it to an entire neighborhood or an entire city or an entire marketplace or the customer base of a competitor, they're going to know who you are and you might feel really disgusting by, okay, great. So pay money to get them instead. How much money are you willing to invest in hopefully getting your competitors, customers to see you? versus just going and knocking on their door for free. Part of growth hacking is conquesting. And we need to really understand what that looks like. Also, how much effort are you playing into DMing your customers or your followers? How much effort are you putting into having conversation with them that is something other than just 
Customer service. Is it zero? Do you think that that's actually a good investment? Would you rather pay more money testing ads that you're not quite sure work to a landing page that you're hoping does a good job or invest time, maybe 15, 20 minutes a day even, going through and having conversations with your customer? And it might not be on the phone. But what if you just started DMing your followers? What if you started DMing people that comment on your posts? What if you start following the people that engage with their competitors? What if you start DMing the people that engage with their competitors? What if you start trying to grow your business without having to pay for every inch instead of take advantage of the work done by somebody else? Your competitors have invested heavily in growing their customer base. And there's going to be this big lie really coming over the next few years about, well, it's a recession, times were easy during COVID, blah, 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 Facebook is hard, iOS 14, all of this nonsense. Excuses to further a victim mentality. And I'm not here for a second of it. Your business isn't going under because of a recession. Your Facebook isn't getting worse and your business shrinking because of iOS 14. No, somebody's doing better work than you and stealing your market share. And as we see this time where a lot of other brands will play defense and bring everybody inside of the castle, you can pillage the entire kingdom. That's an opportunity. Even if it's paying a VA 20 bucks a day to follow a hundred folks from a competitor and DM every single person that follows you and try to have a, somebody in your customer service department reach out to people that engage with your content. Like, hey, I saw that you really like this. We're going to think about putting more of this stuff out. What do you really dig about? Like, why not have that conversation? Why not document that conversation? Why not use your customers and potential customers' words and the customers of your competitors' positions and motivations as content for your business? The point is, why aren't your headlines the pain points that your competitors' customers have? Why aren't you reaching out and figuring out what content works well for them and why? To another point here, if you invested nearly as much time and effort into growth hacking for your business, not just to get followers, but to get market research and business intelligence, if you spend as much time doing one as you could the other, your ads will be running a lot better. Not only that, but remember, because every ad is effectively a retargeting ad, why pay to make that first impression? If you're reaching 100 people a day and your content and you're, con and you're having conversations with a couple dozen people a day and your content looks and feels like the really popular content from your competitors so that you get more and more of the market share of their customer base, when you're actually running ads, do you legitimately think Facebook won't target those individuals who are talking with you? Was a complete stranger likely to have a better estimated action rate than somebody who's been inside of your DMs? The point is, if you're not treating growth hacking on organic social as a really great way to lower your CPA on paid media, you're kind of missing the boat. And the cost-benefit analysis is tremendous. How much do you think it would cost you to get somebody to do half the things that we talked about? Versus how much longer are you willing to have an ad account whose performance doesn't make you feel warm and fuzzy? I'm just saying. And if you have questions about how to do that stuff, please feel free to DM me. Let me know. Comment below if you need more trips to that. Because I've been a growth hacker for a decade or more. And, and like you need to understand that piece because it is organic first. And yes, inside the Facebook Ads MBA program, we cover this stuff all the time. 